Well, my two favorite things in the whole world are making things and sketching things. And I particularly like sketching in very cramped spaces. And I particularly love cute little dinky things. So I've made these little paint boxes and you can see there's a little bit of enameled paint on the inside lid that I use as a mixing palette. And there's a white plastic insert that fits 10 half pans of watercolor just nicely. I've also made these little stickers for putting on the outside of the box. Now the metal of the box is aluminium and it's pretty sturdy, but the black paint finish is inclined to get a little bit dinged. So to avoid that, and also because I like stickers, I have had these little ones made. Now the top ones are a picture of me and a roundy one in my logo. And the bottom one is a transparent rectangular sticker and I figured it would be a good idea to cover a paper label with those transparent stickers and on this paper label I would write the names of whatever colours I choose to put in the little box. Now much as I would love to be a manufacturer of watercolour paint I am not so it's up to you if you buy one of these little mini boxes it's up to you what paints you want to put inside it and to supply them yourself. So here's the little paper label that I've cut to size. It comes with one of these labels that I have written a little table on. Now you could do it yourself, but I figured you'd like to have me do it because I do it quite neatly. And also because, well, what can I say? I do it in my, in my colors, in my little brand colors, which are black, dark, olive green, and white. So I need to break up this little label into 10 squares into which I will write the names of the colors that go in the box in question. And now it's time to write the names in. And on the top skinny little strip there, I'm writing the brand Schmincke and the type, which is super granulating colors. Now I can only fit super granulate, but I don't think I'm gonna to get too confused. Now I'm using the skinny side of my Fude 55 degree pen, but I would say, unless you're used to writing with one of these 55 degree pens, I would suggest using a straight nib fountain pen because otherwise the lines can be a little bit unpredictable. So there we go, there's some names written on it. Now I haven't stuck the labels down yet so we'll just set them aside, turn the box upside upside down and when the ink is nice and dry I peel off the label, stick it on with enough space on the left hand side so that it can be overlapped by the transparent sticky label on top because you want to give it a little bit of a little bit of area of the lid to anchor it to the surface really well. Away it comes, hover it over it a little bit just to make sure it's in the right place. Now I did make my label a tiny bit too wide as you can see, but the label, the little round bit covers one of the names, but you can kind of see through it. And anyway, like I can remember it and I can see it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But maybe next time I'll make it a little bit narrower. And over onto the other side. This is the cover. Now, of course, you can do it the other way around. Or you can stick your stickers wherever you like, because I won't stick them on the box. I'll just include them with your little set. So you can do what you like with them. And anyway, I'm letting you stick the stickers on because like, that's the most fun bit of stickers is sticking them. Is it not? Do I not speak the truth? Gosh, this one just would not come away from the backing paper. Got it eventually. Now, there's only just room for the circle and the sticker of me on the lid. So just make sure to stick each of them, whichever one you put down first, make sure to push it as far to the side as you possibly can. And here we go. Here's what they look like. All nicely protected. And the stickers are kind of plasticky, so they'll do a good job of protecting the metal. There I am. 
my little sketch with Roshan sweatshirt and my sketch with Roshan baseball cap and my sketchbook and my pen and my brush. And here are the little half pans that I filled from tubes of the Schmincke Super Granulating Set, which is called a special edition. Now, the half pans that I bought, now remember I don't supply these, you have to get them yourself, but the half pans that I bought were a tiny little bit smaller than the ones I've bought in the past, which meant that they, they weren't exactly rattling around in the white plastic insert, but neither were they a snug fit. And if I did happen to turn the box upside down, which does happen quite a lot, to be honest, they would have fallen out. So I have used these little sticky squares, glue squares, I think they're called. Very, very sticky. I've cut a strip, just counting them there. I've cut a strip of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my little half pans on each of those little squares, one at a time. Making sure not to mix up the order of colors, because if I do, then they won't match the little label that I've stuck on. So the whole time I was filling the watercolor half pans and the whole time I was refilling them, because you have to wait in between each fill for them to dry properly, I made sure never to let them get mixed up and get out of order. So I know the colors are exactly as they should be. And once all those half pans are stuck down to the little squares, then I snip them. It's much easier to do it this way because those glue squares are very sticky indeed. And I include 10 little glue squares with every box of these paints so that you don't have to go out looking for some yourself. It's not that it costs much, but it's just the convenience of it. You, you're ready to go. And then one by one, you peel off the backing and in they go. And remember, don't get them mixed up. Some of those paper bits are very annoying. And I can figured I could stick them down a little bit better once they were all safe in place. So don't take any chances with these things. There they are, stick, 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 push down, push down, and they are nice and snug. There you go, there's my little box, all set up for painting, for sketching in tight, cramped spaces, like a budget airline seat, or a market, a busy market, or a, I don't know, an outdoor concert or something like that. And I stick my little metal paint box to my sketchbook using this magnetic clip here, which is supposed to be a fridge magnet, but it is a fantastic little solution for attaching your paint box to your sketchbook. Now, if you really want to go mini, you can use this tiny little sketchbook, which is A6 in size. And this one is a Hannah Mula watercolor sketchbook. Um, and I really love the paper in it. I always have done. Because it's just, I don't know, the texture of your watercolor comes out really, really well on that paper. And here are the tubes from which I squeezed the paint. Now, if you want to do things really, really small and neat, then use a water brush instead of a paintbrush and a pot of water because it can be difficult to bend down and dip your brush in the water every time you need to change colour. That's my little short stumpy foodie pen. And here we have my prototype of my little pencil case which unfortunately, very nicely made though it is, unfortunately it's too small. So I measured, but I didn't make a dummy one, and that's where I went wrong. So it fits most things, but you'll see in a second what it doesn't fit. So that's where my little mini paints go. Um, that is where my water brush goes, and that's where my little 55, see they're a bit small as well. That's where my 55 degree foodie pen goes, and that's where my magnetic clip goes. And this is where my uh oh, it's a little bit cramped. It doesn't quite fit in. All I had to do was push it a tiny bit further. I don't know, maybe I can 
rip open the center bit and squash it in a bit further. But as you can see, I can't do up the zip with this sketchbook in place. So I have to make another one and I have to make it a bit bigger. Very disappointed because look how nicely I made it. It's got my own little labels. Oh yes, if you still prefer to use your swanky brushes, because let's face it, the brushes on a water brush just aren't up to much. They'll do the job, but no more than that. Then you can add a little mini water pot that will clip nicely onto your sketchbook. Don't forget to bring a little refill of ink. Just swapping things around there a little bit. Because foodie pens drink ink, they drink ink. As you can see, there's a little bit of tweaking required <laughs> with this prototype. But I have a fancy new sewing machine on the way, so I should be able to take care of that. And one of the things that I'm not happy about with this particular prototype is the zip. I have a big bunch of chunky zips and I'm going to use a much chunkier one to close up my, my pencil case. Because when your fingers are numb and cold, the last thing you need is a tiny, fiddly little zip. Mm, just about closes up, but I can do better. So let's have a look at what comes in the box when you get one of my little mini paint boxes. Well, you get your little tin, and I'll put the stickers on for you if you want me to, just ask. My eyes are a little bit old and if yours are a bit old like mine, you might prefer me to do it. And inside the little tin is the plastic white insert for putting all your half pans of your choice. And it comes with a magnetic clip which is a good size to attach the tiny little box onto your sketchbook. This is the little optional water carrier. It's stainless steel and it's got a clip in it so it can fix to your sketchbook as well. Here's the transparent label, the one you're going to stick on top of your little paper label. You can see the paper label there upside down. And this is what the box looks like when it's all stuffed up and you even get a gift card to try one of my classes. Well, thanks so much for watching. And if, like me, your favorite thing is to sketch in small cramped places and indeed put stickers on things, then get one of my little mini paint boxes while you can.